Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to be talking about tents, and we'd like to thank Josh Brock for liking and sharing the podcast. And we'd also like to thank CastBox for featuring us in their education category, and you can check them out at castbox.fm. And we also have a sponsor this week. It's Life Source Water Systems. They have whole house water filtration, and you can check them out at lifesourcewater.com. Archaeologists found tents in Russia they think date back to around 40,000 B.C. Hmm. Pliny the Elder wrote about ancient Roman armies using tents made out of goat or calf skin, and the early U.S. colonists used camouflage tents to hide and attack the British. Hmm. During the Civil War, soldiers started calling their tents pup tents. Pup? Be- Pup, P-U-P, so they said that they weren't fit to shelter a full-size dog. Only a pup could be comfortable in the tents. (laughs) There are quite a few shapes to tents, and I'm used to the A-frame styles, so that's what, like, the Boy Scouts used to use. Or you'd see them, like, in the old army shows, like Combat. And you can still... Combat? Combat, the old series, the uh, TV series. Oh, what a fantastic TV series. (laughs) And you can still get A-frame, or they'll call it a ridge tent, They have newer styles, modified A-frames that have sides that are curved, so you have more room inside. But the A-frame style isn't the best in windy conditions, although they're very easy to assemble. Dome shapes are very popular. So these have poles that curve up and give an arch top. It's going to have a square or rectangular bottom. They come in tall versions that you can walk into, or they're smaller sizes that let you sit up comfortably. And then there's extended domes, and these styles have storage areas that extend off to one side, or they can have it off on two sides. Mm -hmm. Dome tents have good stability in wind, good interior space, and most are easy to set up. Geodesic and semi-geodesic tents are dome-shaped on top and have a circular base, and they have a crisscross pattern to the poles, which is creating a triangular pattern to the frame, Great for windy conditions, but they're not the best for the interior space, so they're not the best choice for, like, family camping. Hmm. Tunnel or tube tents have a series of poles that arch over the tent to give a tunnel look, and there's a variety of styles. You can get multiple doors, multiple storage areas. Some have separate sleeping areas. Hmm. Many of these are tall, so you have a very comfortable standing height, so these are good for a family tent, or you can get a style that's much smaller and shorter, and it's just comfortable for sitting up. So is this like a separate thing that goes over a tent, or it's no, the, an actual the, type of tent? Yeah, it's it's lo- it's elongated, so it, it looks like a tunnel, like something you'd you know, buy for your cat so it can run through it. <laughs> That's what it is, except supersized. <laughs> so I went to Bass Pro Shops, and on display they had a tunnel tent, 20 feet long, 78 inches high, designed for 10 people. It had a screened-in front porch, so you can set up chairs. That's nice. Yeah, pretty wild. They had no seam mesh windows and a bathtub style floor. So the bathtub floors, it the flooring comes up a couple of inches or the edge all the way around the bottom of the tent. Okay. It folds up a couple of inches, so if it's rainy, rainwater won't come into the tent. Okay. Are and, you gonna explain the no seam thing? So if you see any tents that say they have no seam mesh, it's a very, very fine mesh, so tiny insects can't get in. So the no seams are gnat-like bugs, and they're so tiny that it's, it's hard to see. They have a very painful bite, but because they're so small, you can't see them, so no seam. At the store, did they have a lot of tents on display? Yeah, quite a few. It seemed like primarily it was the dome shape or the extended domes. Did you go in them? Yeah, a whole bunch of them. Amazing how open a lot of them are. Like the whole main body of the tent was just like mesh, Mm -hmm. which I didn't anticipate. I guess I'm so used to like the older style tents. So it really seemed open. And then the salesman there was actually very helpful. He's showing how the rain fly goes over it, you know, how you can cover that. Did you set any up, take any down? Well, he was real nice. So he said if I wanted to take one down Mm -hmm. and put it back together, he said he'd stay there and help me or show me how to put it together. So did you? (laughs) No. 
<laughs> no. What kind of research she, are you doing? Seems like work. <laughs> but what I else think, did you have to do? But, but I, I think that's pretty cool. If you have a store like this around, right. you know, it gives you a feel for the design, how easy it is to take down and put up, mm-hmm. and then the size once you're in there. Right. There are instant or pop-up tents, and these will come in a bag, and the poles unfold. Some of these come in a round carrying case, and when you open the case, the whole thing pops open, <laughs> and then you just have to stake Surprise. it stake it down. Most of these are small for one or two people, and then you have to hold it and twist the whole frame to fold it back up. There are fast pitch tents, and this will vary by the manufacturer of what that means. Mm-hmm. So they're going to have some type of system so you can easily connect the poles and the fabric together. Some are going to have a hub on top of the tent where all the poles will push into this, or they're going to have color-coded poles and sleeves or clips, but there's going to be some way to easily get all the parts in the right place. Hmm. And some of them have the poles already pre-connected to the tent fabric, so it's just easy. Cool. The fast pitch tents can be in a wide range of styles. They can be very large or small. And many are good for families. They can be either dome shape or cabin shape. Mm -hmm. And the family or cabin style tents are very box-like, so they're going to have much straighter walls, usually large with lots of space, great for a family or a big group. Some are going to come with dividers for different sleeping areas, storage areas, screened-in sitting areas, multiple doors to come in and out, (laughs) lots of ventilation. Some have power cord ports. So really? you can run you know, electric in there if you want fans or lighting. You have headroom usually from six to eight feet, somewhere taller than eight feet high. Wow. Where the big, giants? Yeah, <laughs> where some of the large dome shapes were usually around six feet. Mm-hmm. Some of these family style or cabin style are very tall. Hmm. There are rooftop tents. So these mount to the roof racks on your car or your SUV, and they actually stay on top of your car when you're using it. So the styles I saw, they have telescopic ladders that pull out, and as you pull the ladder out, it pulls out the tent bottom, so the bottom is extending past your car. You have a foam pad for the flooring. The tent poles rotate up and lock in place, and the tent material is connected to it. Hmm. So very easy to set up, and the styles I saw had removable rain flies. What is that? So the rain fly is this extra sheet of material that you put over your tent. So if you have a tent with a... a cover. Right, exactly. So if you have a tent with a lot of of screening, Mm -hmm. you need this rain fly, this cover, to put... Otherwise you'll get wet. Yes, so it's it's a raincoat for your tent. (laughs) So some had awnings that actually, you know, create a shade underneath the tent on top of your car. So you have this covered storage area, and you have to check the dynamic weight capacity of your car. So this is the amount of weight that's allowed when your car is in motion to see where the tent can be on your car. And then you have to check the weight rating when your car is parked, plus the amount of weight of the people inside. And the styles I saw were primarily two-person, and I saw one style. No ten-person tent? And I saw one that was a (laughs) three-person for on top of your car. (laughs) But it's pretty cool. You know, you don't have to worry about a dry, smooth area for your tent Mm -hmm. or, you know, wet ground or anything like that. A couple of companies that have top-rated rooftop tents, Yamaka, it's Y-A-H-M-I-K-A, and Tepui, T-E-P-U-I. Another type of tent that will keep you off the ground is a hammock-style tent, and this has to be suspended from trees. This doesn't sound comfortable. (laughs) Hammocks are the best. So the ones I saw will fit two or three people. One had a rating of over 800 pounds. The problem is you need three trees with a 10-inch minimum diameter. How far off the ground are you? I think they wanted the strapping that holds it up four feet off the ground, and they have four like four feet, and then they have like a ratcheting system to snug it up. So do but you, you don't have to worry about rattlesnakes. Okay, with this one. well, yippee. how do you get out of it? I think there's like a rope ladder that <laughs> or a pole. <laughs> you have to bring your extension ladder. But other than that, super cool. So one top-rated company I saw was Tensile. It's T-E-N-T-S-I-L-E. And they plant trees every time they sell one of these. Because oh, well, nice. you need trees to yeah. be in it. And then there's another top-rated company, Trees Tree Tents. So it's T-R-E-E-Z Tree Tents. Hmm. 
Tents can be freestanding or non-freestanding, and the freestanding tents can be assembled and then they stand up on their own without being staked in the ground with guy lines to maintain the shape. Mm -hmm. Whereas like an A-frame style, you need those wires or you need those ropes mm -hmm. to hold them up, otherwise it collapses. So the freestanding tent should still be staked to prevent damage in windy conditions. Many of the dome tents only need four stakes in the four corners for a basic setup but then you'd want to add additional guy lines. So most tents are going to have these loops all around the tent that you can add additional guy lines, stake them into the ground. It's going to give it more support in windy conditions and reinforce the poles. Hmm. When you're comparing tents, you may see single wall or double wall. The single wall is usually for winter camping, so it's going to have thicker, heavier material. A double wall tent is for milder conditions. The main tent is going to have lighter, thinner material usually going to have a lot of mesh sections for visibility and airflow and then you can cover the tent with a rain fly for protection against the rain. Hmm. You want to look for a design that allows for ventilation when you have that rain fly on to prevent a buildup of condensation because the warm air from your breathing, if you're sweaty, if you have wet clothes that can collect on the inside of the tent and then when it cools off outside it causes condensation if there's not enough ventilation. Hmm. A two-season tent or a summer tent is going to have a lot of ventilation and a very light rain fly. A three-season tent is designed for spring, summer, or fall with a heavy-duty rain fly. A four-season tent is generally a single-wall, heavy-duty tent made for cold conditions. Hmm. It's usually going to have minimal ventilation to save heat. It's going to have heavier fabric and heavier poles to stand up to snow. Our sponsor this week is Life Source Water Systems, and they have full house water filtering systems to purify your drinking water. They're certified and tested by an NSF ANSI accredited laboratory. Were and, you just saying letters? Or they, mean something? <laughs> they mean it's really cool. <laughs> and the filters they use are activated carbon from a blend of coconut shell charcoal. Hmm. So that's also very cool. In 2016, 480 billion plastic bottles were purchased globally, and less than half of that, they guess, are being recycled. So a lot of this is ending up in the oceans and landfills. Well, it's like a big problem here with the Great Lakes. Okay. I think it's like 22 million pounds of plastic goes into the Great Lakes every year. Amazing. Which is sad. It really, filter your own water, put and it save into... Save money. <laughs> yeah, save money. You can put it into a reusable water bottle and then you don't have all of this plastic to throw out. So if you're looking for a great water filtering system for your home, it's lifesourcewater.com. I talked to MSR Tents and I got some tent tips, and MSR is Mountain Safety Research. It was started in 1969 by an engineer who was a mountain climber, mm -hmm. and their tent manager, Terry Bro, said... Bro? Well, it's not spelled like bro, but you say it like bro. So Mr. Bro, what does he have to say? <laughs> he said, one thing to consider is the weight and what the tent is going to be designed for. If you're backpacking or biking, then weight and how easy the tent is to carry is going to be one of the key features mm. when you're comparing them. Some tents are designed for specific activities. So MSR has ultra lightweight tents that weigh under a pound wow. for hiking. They have A-frame trekking tents that use two trekking poles as the poles to hold up the tent. So yeah. these are ultra lightweight. <laughs> so you're actually just using those and then just wire. Sure. <laughs> yeah, Why pretty, carry more stuff? Right. For biking, they have Hubbatour tents. So it's H-U-B-B-A-T-O-U-R. And these have an exoskeleton pole design that keeps the inside of the tent dry while you're putting it up. Hmm. And it has a large vestibule so you can store your gear. And if you're camping next to your car, then the weight of the tent is less important right. so you can go for more comfort features. Mm -hmm. When you're comparing capacity, how many people are going to be using the tent? Most manufacturers have a number in the name for the amount of people it's rated for, and that number is just a general guide, and it's usually going to be a tight fit. So what you should really be looking at is the floor area of the tents and the height of the people that are going to be inside of it for right. a more comfortable fit. And, you know, what are you using? Are you using air mattresses or bedding? How much gear are you going to have in the mm -hmm. tent? Some pros are suggesting add two for a comfortable experience. So if, you're, if you have four people that are going to go camping, look for a six-person tent. Right. And it's going to give you a little more room. Or bring two tents. Right. <laughs> there you go. They have this pod tents where you can connect them, oh. which is pretty cool. <laughs> 
If you're car camping or camping with your family, look at the heights of the tents. A taller one's going to be more comfortable for everybody. How many doors are there and how are they positioned? If you have to leave the tent in the middle of the night, it's a lot easier if you don't have to step over everybody. It's less disruptive <laughs> if you have multiple doors. Right. The venting, how much light and ventilation does the tent have? Does it have windows or doors you can open and close for privacy? Mm -hmm. How is the rain fly attached and what options do you have for ventilation? Do you have a vestibule area to protect your gear? And for family tents, is there a screened in area for sitting or storing your gear? Some have a large area where you can sit up a table yeah. and chairs. Some tents have gear lofts, so these are pouches to hold stuff. There are pockets to hold lights or pockets for storage all around the tent and some of the bigger tents. Hooks to hold a clothesline so you can dry out wet clothes. And then check the quality of the zippers if you go into a store. You can get zippers that glow in the dark or there's reflective guy lines with tensioning locks that glow in the dark. There's a company called Uco Gear. It's U-C-O Gear. And they have LED lighted tent stakes hmm. to help prevent tripping over the guy lines. That's nice. A footprint is going to help protect the bottom of your tent. What is and it? This is a custom-sized ground cloth to set your tent on, and it's slightly smaller than the tent so it doesn't collect water if it's raining. Hmm. And this is going to add to the life of the tent, especially if you have a lightweight tent, you're going to have less abrasion on the bottom of it. It's going to give it extra water resistance. Many pros are saying keep this in a separate bag so that you're not getting that dirt and moisture on your main tent. Okay. Another thing to look for is the bathtub style floor. So I mentioned that it has side walls that come up a couple of inches. That's mm -hmm. going to protect against water coming into the tent easily. Good. The poles can be a variety of materials. The most common are going to be solid fiberglass. And these are light and flexible. They're usually long poles. Mm -hmm. You can get tubular fiberglass generally held together with shock cords. So an elastic cord. And that's going to keep one section together. So right. it's also you know, it's much faster to put together. Mm -hmm. Aluminum, you have tubular and solid. It can either be corded or collapsible. They're going to be more durable than fiberglass. There's high strength aluminum. There's carbon fiber, very light and durable, more expensive. And the carbon fiber is what they use in helmets and in airplanes. Hmm. You can see this in some of the ultra lightweight tents too. Okay. For the fabric, there's a lot of different specialized nylon and polyester blends that companies use for the tents. Many use polyester for the walls and the floor. Nylon is used for many of the lightweight backpack tents. Mm. And rip stop nylon has thick threads sewn into the material to stop the fabric from ripping. So, Why do you sound excited about that? Well, it's interesting that rip stop nylon was developed in World War II to replace silk parachutes because we weren't importing silk from Japan at the time. <laughs> so it's crazy that silk comes from silkworms. Totally crazy. <laughs> and since we're talking about parachutes, crab spiders are only about an eighth of an inch in size, and they can spin a web up to eight feet long to create a parachute that they can use to fly through the air. Some of them reach speeds of seven miles an hour, and scientists think that they do this to find food not just to have fun. <laughs> there are sil nylon tents, so it's silicone treated nylon. There's polyester blends treated to resist UV. You can get canvas tents. And on some of these you're gonna see a number and a D after it, or you're gonna see denier, it's D-E-N-I-E-R. It's pronounced a couple different ways. But you're going to have different thicknesses for the material. So okay. in some of the lightweight backpack tents, you might see 20D ripstop or 68D or 75D. A human hair is about 20D. Hmm. And then for car camping or family tents, you might see a range from 150D to 600D. The bigger the number, the stronger it's going to be. The waterproofing rating is the thickness of the coating, and it's usually 600 to 3,000 millimeters in range. An umbrella has a coating 400 to 500 millimeters. Okay. The bigger the number, the better the protection. You're going to see sealed seams or fully taped seams. That means all the seams are taped to protect it against water. Mm -hmm. Welded seams, the sections are fused together. And then seams on silicone-treated tents usually won't have seam tape unless the top is silicone-treated and the inside is treated with polyurethane or a polyurethane coating, and it's usually abbreviated PU, mm -hmm. and that side can have tape on it. Okay. If your seams ever leak, you can reseal them. So generally, you're going to clean the seams with rubbing alcohol and a cloth, and there's different sealants for silicone fabric 
or polyurethane treated fabric. You're going to spread the sealant along the seam and let it cure, but check your manual for what they recommend. Okay. Over time, you're going to add a waterproofing to the outside of the tent and you're just going to spray it on or wipe it on. There's a couple of top rated companies. Nick Wax, it's N I K W A X. They have tent and gear solar proof and it also helps protect it against UV. And then Kiwi Camp Dry, it's K I W I, and this is a water repellent. Hmm. When you're comparing colors, think about how much heat is going to be absorbed and how much light filters through if you have your rain fly on. I was reading a couple of the camping blogs, and mm-hmm. a few of them said that the light colors attract bugs. Bummer. Also, search and rescue organizations like bright colors. So they like bright yellow and bright red. And then if you're going to be camping around hunters, I think bright colors would probably be good. <laughs> no camo. <laughs> <laughs> I have some tent tips. Okay. So don't set up your tent under trees or overhead power lines. you got to worry about falling limbs. Also, sap and bird droppings can damage the waterproofing. Bummer. Always want to use stakes and guy lines to protect your tent. Reduce the chance of injury or damage to the tent if it gets windy. And then position the narrow end of the tent into the wind. Always allow the tent to completely dry before you store it. UV is one of the main causes of damage to most fabrics. Keep it protected with a UV protectant. You want to clean and dry your tent before you store it. Use a footprint. Connect and disconnect the poles carefully to prevent damaging them. Keep your shoes off inside the tent. Mm -hmm. Keep your tent in the shade when possible. Store it loose, let it breathe, and then clean it with a soft cloth or sponge. You never want to machine wash it. You just want to use water and a small amount of non-detergent soap Hmm. and be very gentle with the zippers. I have some safety tips. Okay. Never use heaters or fuel-burning appliances while you're sleeping. Don't smoke in your tent. Don't burn candles or have any open flame in a tent. Keep campfires 10 to 12 feet from your tent. Never refuel your lanterns in a tent. Never cook in your tent. And if you're using a fuel-burning appliance, check your manual for how much venting they want. For example, it might say they want a 2-inch by 20-inch opening per appliance. Hmm. And then keep a fire extinguisher in the tent. What are some top-rated tent companies? MSR, Coleman, C-O-L-E-M-A-N, Wakeman, W-A-K-E-M-A-N, Gazelle, G-A-Z-E-L-L-E, Pro HT, so it's P-R-O, capital H, capital T, Giga Tent, it's G-I-G-A, Tent, Kelty, K-E-L-T-Y, Cabela's, C-A-B-E-L-A, Kodiak, K-O-D-I-A-K, Rogue, Expedition, The North Face, Marmot, M-A-R-M-O-T, Big Agnes, it's A-G-N-E-S, Nemo, N-E-M-O, Alps, Mountaineering, R-E-I, and Columbia has one tent that's highly rated. Just one tent? And that's all I could see that they have is one tent, (laughs) but it's highly rated. Do you have anything else to add? I would say if you're backpacking, you want to look for a tent that's easy to carry. It's lightweight. If you plan on having a family tent or your car camping, go for big and tall with lots of area for gear and pockets and light. And then I would get out to a store if you have something close so you can check them out, see all the different features, Mm -hmm. or go online. It's amazing the variety now of all the features and the styles. And a lot of colors, too. Right. Just looking up pictures for Twitter. Right. I was surprised by all the colors. Follow Cindy at Fixit Co-host. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, CastBox, Player FM, or your favorite podcast app. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our books, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. And you can follow Cindy on Twitter at Fix It Co-host. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Do you have a